You know, I've done a lot of videos on sharpening, and those are the videos that get the most comments of anything on my YouTube channel. And so I was trying to figure out what system I wanted to bring into the Camp Tool store. And to do that, you know how we work here. If it's in our store, it's in our shop. And so we wanted to find the best sharpening system. We also wanted to answer all the questions and find out all the myths that need to be busted. And so we set out, and by we, I brought in a real scientist, <laughs> Suman Sarkar. Yes, thanks for having me. Of course. He did a video on the uh, diminishing returns of overly stropping. It was really great. And he used this tester, this scale, that tells you exactly how sharp a blade is. And that has unlocked a lot of answers for us. It's given us the opportunity to really find out what is sharp, what is the best sharpening system, should you strop, should you not strop. Basically, is it worth it? Is it worth it? So we're gonna answer that today. We're gonna do that by first defining what is sharp. We're gonna talk about what that looks like at home if you don't have one of these $350 testers, which you probably don't, if you don't have a microscope like this one. And we're gonna, we're gonna walk you through how to sharpen quickly and what it looks like when you get a good result. So let's dive into some of the tests, but first, let's identify what is sharp. The entirety of this test revolves around this scale here. It's a pretty expensive piece of equipment. It is a scale for measuring sharpness. And the way it does this is it has these pieces of test media. It can come in this thing where you set the, the wire yourself or they have all these clips that are, what did you say? They're calibrated and tensioned properly so you don't have to use. Right. Some. One of the problems with this thing is you tension it yourself every time. So you get different vari variations of tension. So we got these test clips that are all tensioned in the lab or something. Yep. Yeah. So. Basically, you take one of these, you put it in your scale, you zero it out, and then you cut using either this fulcrum or you do it by hand. They say it should take four to six seconds for a test right. because if you go too fast, you can snap the wire. So basically, you take your chisel and you slowly press down until it snaps like that. And the scale, what's really cool, it measures in grams, so it's very simple. The lower the number, the sharper, the sharper it, is. it is. What we had to do first before we did this test was identify what is sharp. So tell us, what is sharp, Suman? So basically, if you can cleanly and effortlessly cut a printing paper, or if you can shave nice and cleanly without agitating your skin, mm -hmm. it's probably sharp enough for woodworking. And for that, it's usually around 140 or less on this scale. So keep that number in mind for all of the tests that we're going to show you today, because you can kind of gauge the sharpness of everything else that we do. And it has to be printer paper. Magazine paper or newspaper is not gonna work because it's so much thinner, it tends to rip. You'd have to be at a much lower number to get a clean cut exactly. on those. Okay, quick review on sharpening. And I have maintained through all of my sharpening videos over the years that it is something that people put way too much emphasis on. It is very easy to do because there's only one goal. You have metal, it comes to a point. All of the cutting is done right on that point. And so what you need to do is create a new edge. And when you create a new edge, you create what is called a burr. A burr looks like this on the microscope. You can feel it with the tip of your finger. Your fingers are very sensitive. You can feel it. You want to feel it all the way across. In fact, if you're sharpening with a jig or by hand and you feel like you're out of square, it's probably just a pressure thing. A lot of times people put more pressure, you know, on their dominant hand and you'll start to get a bevel. It's a little crooked. That doesn't matter especially like for a plane blade, you can adjust that with the lateral adjustment in your plane. You I mean, you can adjust a plane blade many degrees. And so if you're a little bit off, that's fine. With chisel, a little bit more important to be square, but it's also a lot easier to fix. Just put a little bit more pressure on your other finger or the different side of the blade if you're doing it freehand. Again, doesn't matter. So you go until you create a burr. And the way we did it is we created a burr on our lowest grit stone or lapping film. And then we moved up through the grits doing the same amount of strokes as we went up. Uh, it was usually about 20 on the lower grits and then 30 as I got into the higher grits. Okay, you can see here, this is after only about 30 seconds of sharpening. We have a nice clean micro bevel across uh, and we've created a burr. And a burr, if you can feel it, in fact, you can almost see it right there. I can pull it up, it's a tiny little, almost like a little wire. And you can feel a little bump, you can see it, and it just is very easy to tell. And that's what you need to knock off to make it finally sharp. Let me show you what that looks like under the microscope. Okay, you can see here, this is the 25 degree main bevel off the diamond stone on the Tormach, a 600 grit diamond stone. And then this is after we did the scary sharp system all the way through 60,000 grit or 0.3 microns. And then this is our burr here. That's where you can feel that little piece of wire. It's essentially where the blade got so thin and you removed so much material, it became like a piece of paper, almost like a snake shedding its skin. That's what's falling off. And that's what you need to remove to make your blade finally strop. Then once you've gone through 
all of your grits all the way up before you strop, if that is what you're gonna do. You then take it out of your hunting guide or if you're doing it freehand, flip it over and do the back on the highest grit. Typically when you get a new cutting edge, whether it's a plain blade or a chisel, you wanna lap the back. Once you lap the back and with a chisel, I like to go about an inch, you know, as deep as you're really ever gonna cut. I think an inch is as far as you need to go. Some people like to do the whole back, that's up to you, but it's a lot more work. And with a plain blade, you can either lap the back or use the ruler trick, which I believe is created by David Chatsworth. I know Rob Cosman likes to do it, but it's where you use a very small, thin piece of metal, a shim or a ruler, uh, and you just do the very tip. Because on a plain blade, that's all that matters. It's a great little shortcut. The only downside is once you commit to that, you're kind of stuck with it because you've now created such, you know, a small bevel on the end and to get it back to flat, you got to do a lot of work. So that's how we did it. Each test, each system, we did it the same, same number of strokes uh, and we tested a lot of different things. The first thing we tested was the 25 degree bevel versus a 30 degree bevel. Was there any difference? Now, typically people say to do a 30 degree Michael bevel because that, just like the ruler trick on the plane blade, it makes sharpening a lot easier. Just need to take off the very tip. Now, when you get a new cutting tool, whether it's a chisel or a plane iron, I don't recommend regrinding the bevel. There's no need, because again, all that cutting happens at the tip. So 25 versus 30, I mean, it's simple as far as energy output. 25, you gotta do a lot more work because that's usually what your bevel's at. So when you come up to 30 degrees, much less work to do. All you need to do is get a thin sliver across the entirety of your cutting edge. Now, we found that this is a great baseline to talk about. Is just off all the stones, 25 and 30 degree micro bevel, it came to about 180 grams on the scale. Now, you remember when we talked about it with Suman, that 140 is your baseline. You wanna get below that baseline. So, 180 off the stones, that's great, but it was the same for 25 and 30, so there is no difference. Once we defined that 25 and 30 degrees had no difference on sharpness, we proceeded with the rest of our test. We sharpened everything to a 30 degree micro bevel using A2 tool steel, it's really tough to say, from Lee Nielsen, so we used all the same type of plane blade and then all the same types of chisel, which were the Narex Richter chisels, both very high quality stuff. If you wanna see the difference between different types of tool steels and how they affect sharpness, head over to Suman's channel. Uh, he's gonna be publishing a video, which I will link down below in the pinned comment and description. So, Here's what we did with the test. We tested scary sharp, diamond stones, water stones. We got these really expensive glass Shapton stones. We test different kinds of strops. So we tested thin, thick, MDF, the 60,000 grit scary sharp paper, the 30,000 grit Shapton stone, and then we did degrading sharpness. So how fast does a blade degrade? How long do you have to go in between sharpening? And then of course we defined what is sharp, which we talked about in the beginning. So let's go ahead and get into the test. What do you guys think? Let's talk about strops first. How to strop and which method to use is one of the hotly debated topics in woodworking and sharpening. You can use a soft leather, hard leather, and in my case, I did a video that had a soft leather and created a lot of debates and people said to use MDF instead. By the condition of this piece of MDF, you can tell how Jonathan felt about it and how the test results came out. Yeah, I think that the one thing we found from all of our tests during this video shoot was that stropping is really necessary. You have to strop to get, knock off an edge and you have to strop to get under 140, right. um, which was that number we defined at the beginning as sharp enough. But we found some really big differences between strops and then not a lot. The biggest not difference was MDF. It was terrible. Really, it got as close to that 140 number as would anything, but I think really that just is the sharpening compound that was getting it there. The hard MDF strop really didn't do a lot to get something sharper than we got off of any of these stones or sharpening systems. Where we did see a lot of results and a big difference was in the type of strop we used. This thicker strop that we used, it didn't quite do as well as this hard leather strop. In fact, the hard leather strop only saw about a 33% increase in sharpness where the hard strop saw about a 39% increase in sharpness. Now where this gets really interesting is some alternatives to stropping, right? That's the 60,000 grit 0.3 micron in the scary sharp system or 30,000 grit glass ceramic Shapton stone. Now this is a $400 stone and I was so excited to get this because we spent, I spent, I don't know, $3,000 on this test and again, if you wanna head over to the Cat's Moses Tool Store, none of these videos are ever sponsored and we are supported by people like you heading over to our website. So we appreciate that, helps pay for tests like this and these 3,000 grit stones, which um, in one word, how did this turn out? Terrible. Terrible. 
Shapton did not do anything. We saw 11% increase in sharpness going from sort of our highest grit stone, which is, you know, water stone's about 8,000 grit, 1,200 grit on a diamond stone, which is, the grits are measured much differently in those, right. but the Shapton had almost no impact on sharpness. But the 60,000 grit scary sharp system had almost the same. It was 38% increase in sharpness versus the hard leather strop, uh, which saw a 39% increase. So the absolute two best stropping methods are the scary sharp system and a hard leather strop. Uh, the soft leather strop wasn't far behind and certainly not a bad alternative, but I think that really plays into the video that you did about diminishing rate of return. As you strop, your blade starts to round over. And the softer your strop is, the faster that happens because it becomes like a cushion. You know, when you put your head on a pillow at night when you go to sleep, you know, it tends to wrap around the tip of that blade. So the harder it is, this very thin leather strop, I don't have a link for you because somebody gave this to me as a gift, but I believe they got it off Etsy. Basically any very thin piece of leather with some honing compound, make sure you get, I'll link the best one we found and we did yeah. find there was a big difference oh, between yeah. honing compounds. Um, I'll link this one below, it's cheap, 13 bucks or something. Get yourself just like a hard piece of hardwood, this is cherry it looks like, with a thin piece of leather stropping and that's a great strop, a great option for stropping. So after all of the stropping was concluded, we then decided to do a edge durability test. So we took a well pristine sharpened edge, mounted it on a hand plane, and took off 10, 50, and 100 shavings on hard maple. Yes, this is actually why I brought Suman so that I didn't have to do any hand plane. It was great. I this, have guy was, <laughs> this guy was ex <laughs> he was exhausted yesterday, but uh, I was sitting there having a cocktail. What was really interesting is we wanted to answer how often should you sharpen, right? Right. So, we did this test and we got everything down to about 110 to 120 on the mm -hmm. scale. And what we noticed that was so interesting is that sometimes we'd see actually an increase in sharpness after 10 strokes because mm -hmm. maybe there was a little burr left. Yep. There was yep. a little bit of edge need to be burnished almost. Mm -hmm. So it was almost like it got a little bit sharper and then started to degrade. And it after 50 strokes, it degraded about 10 to 20 grams mm -hmm. of pressure, still well under the 140. Right. But then after 100 strokes, the interesting thing was it didn't really change at all we saw a very, very slow degradation of that edge. And what that led us to find, we did this many, many times, mm -hmm. uh, is that you don't need to sharpen that often. I think that, you know, you could probably get anywhere from 200 to 500 strokes between full sharpenings where you take mm -hmm. your 30 degree bevel back. And again, you just have to get that little burr and then strop and you're gonna be fine. Occasional strop, on a hard strop just to really touch up your edge is gonna keep you going for a long, long time. I'll be interested to see in your video, uh, mm -hmm. maybe these are published on the same day, so this is a weird comment, yep. but, uh, and I'll already know the answer to this, <laughs> this is past Jonathan. But I'll be interested to see, you know, what different tool steels do to sharpness. But right. what we found is people are sharpening too much. Your plain blade is gonna stay fine. Yep. And I think as long as you can get close to shaving paper, that's where you're gonna end up anyways. Cause mm -hmm. The thing about getting something crazy sharp that we found is it degrades so fast to just about that, over that 140 number. Right. So you can get it razor sharp and it shaves paper, but in a matter of 10 strokes, you're gonna be just over that, where it's just starting to rip paper. And so if you're always trying to be in that place where you can shave or rip paper, you're really just gonna be chasing your tail and you're gonna be sharpening right. too much because it just is gonna go back down to about that 150 mm -hmm. mark anyways. So I think you can go much longer between sharpenings, an occasional hard strop to touch up an edge when you need to do something real important. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're taking off the final pass on a dovetail or the edge of a mortise that's gonna be visible or a tenon, something like that. That's when you need to touch up your edge. But until then, you can just go, go to town. The key takeaway from all of this is that modern tooling steel are phenomenal. They're going to hold an edge really well, and there's no need to resharpen over and over again just to get back to a pristine edge because they're still plenty sharp for woodworking. And I think importantly too, we notice no difference between any of these systems as to like degradation of edge. Anything you use is gonna work fine. Yep. I think that's the answer. And I think yep. that's gonna be the theme to this video is it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. Like, man, people are so up in arms about all these systems. And the thing I found from this is it doesn't matter. All you have to do, get a burr, strop it, go to town. So now that I've said that, let's talk about these different systems, the pros and cons of each and what we found. And there was some clear winners, but again, mm -hmm. When you talk about that degradation of edge, right. it doesn't matter because you're gonna drop down right away to something that is gonna be your baseline for the next 300 strokes with your hand plane. So let's come into the bench. We'll talk about the uh, different systems and uh, how they work. 
All right, so let's talk about these different systems. Uh, first, let's talk about water stones. Water stones, I feel like, are one of those things that a lot of woodworkers, especially traditional woodworkers, really believe in. And I, I you know, I, I think after this test, it is not something I'm gonna continue to use. They are messy. <laughs> Oh, that didn't go the way I wanted it to. They are so messy. You have to soak them in water every time before you use them, and then you have to flatten them. So you need to also have a flattening stone. A good diamond stone will work as a flattening device. You can also buy a dedicated flattening stones for them. You know, I think as a cost, when you look at these, a cheaper whetstone with two grits is gonna be anywhere from 20 to 40 bucks. And then if you look at these Shapton stones, this 30,000 grit stone is about $318 on Amazon. The 16,000 grit one is just over 100. Now again, I have to really reiterate, these did nothing on our test. They added no benefit over a strop. In fact, a strop got the, a lot sharper than using any stones than a Shapton. Um, so I would definitely recommend skipping these really expensive stones. Now Shapton I know makes really high end water stones and what you're paying for the more expensive your stone is it degrades less as you sharpen. These cheaper stones like this 8,000 grit, I have to flatten it every time after I sharpen. So I do one chisel 30 times, I need to flatten this stone again. You can see it starts to get a hollow in it. And that's really a pain in the butt. And when you flatten, it's really messy. And you need to worry about contamination of grits when you do that. You flatten, then you have to rinse it off because what you don't wanna have happen is you sharpen on your 3,000, and then you go to your 8,000 and you sharpen again and you have the green grit over here on the white. So you wanna avoid that. These are incredibly messy. When it comes to sharpening, they are pretty good though. And again, it doesn't matter because you'll see these all got to basically the same place. Before stropping, this was at about an average of 152 for the water stones. And after stropping, the chisel got down to about 134. The plain irons got down to about 128. So they were able to get things very sharp and then we stropped and they were well below that 140 number, which we're looking for. So great stones, they do a good job. They are just so messy. And I think there's a lot of money you can put into these without any added benefit over some of these other ones. Now, when we talk about diamond stones, these are more expensive, but you have to buy less because they're just ready to go. I love diamond stones because they're so great at removing material quickly. They remove material faster than any other system. So when you need to lap a back or regrind a bevel, these are a great option. The extra coarse one is very, very coarse, really easy to get uh, your bevel down or your back lapped flat and then move up through the grits. They, however, are not as good at getting things sharp. I think because of the scratch pattern from some of the lower grits, it's harder to remove that scratch pattern. Sharpening is very much like sanding where you need to sort of remove the grit before it to continue to get sharper and sharper. And so the grit on some of this real coarse stuff is so gritty that it leaves very deep scratch patterns and I think it can lead to a less sharp edge. Before stropping, these were, you know, 220 to 240, so much, much coarser than off the water stones uh, and the scary sharp system, which we'll talk about here in a second. But after sharpening on the chisels, we got down to an average of about 138. And with the planes, we got down to an average about 142. So not quite below the 140 that we're looking for. And I think that's the problem with diamond stones. Can't quite get as sharp, but when you need material removal, nothing beats a diamond stone and you can get pretty sharp. I mean, when I say like, oh, we only got down to 142, it doesn't matter because that's going to be right where you're at and it's going to come back around, you know, 170, 180 after you use it a few times. So uh, great option if you want the lowest mess, the easiest, no maintenance stone. I mean, you just spray, I spray a little water on them. People use Windex. I use, there's this Bora fluid or Tormek fluid that stops diamond stones from rusting, um, which to be clear, they're not rusting. It's the filings from your plain iron that are rusting in there. I love these. There's diamond stones that are flat where it has continuous grit. But I just found these and what I love about them is all these little holes catch the filings. So you don't need to clean them off as often when you're sharpening, especially when you're trying to flatten something or regrind a bevel, that really makes a difference. You don't have to clean them off and get all the filings out of the way because that can clog up your diamond stones. These holes are great. Love these, great, uh, aren't gonna get things as sharp. So let's talk about the Scary Sharp system. And again, Scary Sharp is just the nickname that it's been given. This is lapping film. This is specifically for polishing metal. Now, these sheets have pressure sensitive adhesive on the back of them, PSA is what it's called, and it's great. You can see here, this is how you apply it. Spray a little bit of water on a flat surface, and then that allows you, the water creates a thin layer so that you can position it exactly where you want, and then you squeegee it, and when you squeegee it, that creates pressure, hence pressure-sensitive adhesive, and attaches it firmly to your flat surface. Now, 
Like I said, I've been using this a couple of years. Here's one of mine on float glass. I used to be a fan of the float glass, but I am not anymore. Like, in fact, here's a chip of it right here that chipped off while we were setting up for this video. This float glass chips. It's obviously not tempered glass, so it can break very easily. You have to be careful with it. You know, sometimes I cut myself on the edges. They're very ragged. Um, so I'm becoming not a fan of what I have found is great is these tiles. I got these from Home Depot. You can get them from anywhere. You can go to places that sell granite and marble and get off cuts sometimes. That is very flat. Uh, but these tiles from Home Depot were like a buck 49 per square foot. I bought two foot by one foot sections. I just cut them with a glass cutter. You can snap them over a dowel and they are very flat. I'm sure that some scientist out there is snickering at me, you know, cause oh, they're not Rick and Morty flat. But you know what? They're flat enough to get your chisel really, really sharp. And I really, really like these. Now, when you want to talk about surprising, these got everything sharper than any other system here. It was really incredible. So dollar for dollar, when we're talking about we just need to get a burr, and sharpening doesn't really matter because you're going to strop anyways, this is going to be your best value. Now, I know I've seen videos out there, scary sharp system is dead and things like that, but it really, dollar for dollar, when you don't, you know, we talked about how you don't have to sharpen that often, you can sharpen less than you are, and you just need to get that burr this is an amazing option because when we want to talk about sharp this before stropping uh with the chisel this got down to an average of 130 well below that 140 mark which only the water stones did the the diamond stones did not uh and then with the plain iron this got down to an average of 114 which is by far the lowest of anything in the test. Now there is a reason for that, which is the 60,000 grit paper that this kit comes with. It's 0.3 microns, which is about the same as a strop. So you could absolutely just buy the Scary Sharp, the lapping film system, put it on something flat and you don't even need a strop. So we have this over on our website for 14 ish bucks or something. Uh, I don't know, I'll link them down below. We just brought this in because of this test. Like I said at the beginning of the video, we were looking for a sharpening system to bring into our store. Dollar for dollar, this is one of your best options because you can get away without a strop. So when we're looking at these three systems and we talk about the results of our test, here's the answer, guys. It doesn't matter. Everything will get you down to where you need to be as long as you have a strop. That's all that matters. You, you listen, you sharpen however you want. You can use an oil stone, a diamond stone, a water stone, a sandpaper, lapping film. It doesn't matter. We've proven it. We did hundreds of tests. I mean, look at this. This is just some of the test strips we did. We absolutely beat this to a pulp. And I'm telling you right now, if you have a strop, it doesn't matter. So if it was me, here's what I would choose. If I could just have one thing and not have all my fancy gadgets that we have in this huge shop, I would pick an extra course, which is 60 micron or about 220 grit, and a course, which is 45 micron, uh, which is about 325 grit for grinding bevels and lapping backs. You can get that grit with the scary sharp system you get 300 grit uh 300 grit or 40 microns is your lowest piece of paper that comes with it but if you're grinding bevels and lapping backs you're going to rip through this and you're gonna have to replace it all the time but for just day-to-day -day sharpening when you're touching up your 30 degree micro bevel the scary sharp system you can't beat it at like a buck buck 50 a sheet and a strop so you can get through this and then with the strop you are going to get stuff so sharp you can split atoms and then when it settles in after you've used it about 10 to 20 times you're going to settle in about the 140 to 160 range and you're going to stay there for a long time and then you can just come back here touch up your edge and if you don't want to get a strop this 60,000 grit paper works great pick up some of these tiles for like two bucks a square foot or i think it was a buck 50 a square foot and your money you're golden and like i said i'm going to link everything that we talked about down below in the pinned comment and description uh, i just because of this test ordered the scary sharp system that's in our store so let's let's finalize this let's talk about uh, a couple last thoughts and uh check in with sumak so sorry for getting on my soapbox there but when we do these tests i love when we get results like this because it's like all of these myths and things and comments I get. And it's kind of like, you know, a mic drop moment for all those terrible comments I get mm -hmm. on all those videos. Uh, what was your biggest takeaway from after doing this? Yeah, test? so having objective ways to measure something is very useful. And in that regard, the Shapton 30,000, I was really rooting for this because it's the most expensive. It's the fanciest stone. Unfortunately, it just didn't perform as well as we expected. Surprisingly, stropping on a hard backed surface is very effective at getting a really nice edge uh, with some of these green compounds. Again, we'll 
we'll talk about the specifics of the compounds that work best that we found. Yeah, you're gonna do that in your video, right? I'll, yep, I'm gonna be definitely testing those as well and in my video. that'll be linked down below in the mm -hmm. pinned comment and description. So I mean, the biggest takeaway from this test is there are so many videos on sharpening. Some of my most watched videos, millions of mm -hmm. views. And the reality is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And none of the, everything with a strop will get you down to be really, really sharp. All of these systems will get you about the same results. And it's about finding what works best for you. I think I know what works best for me after this test, but that's up for you to decide. And anybody who tells you any differently is wrong because it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. And I think that when it comes to sharpening, if you progress through the grits of whatever system you choose and you go with a hard back strop or even a soft strop works great, you're gonna get fantastic results and you don't need to sharpen as much as you think you do. And you certainly, I think it's one of those things that beginner woodworkers really get their, their underwear in a bunch over because mm -hmm. they just hear so much stuff about you gotta do this, has to be perfectly square and this and lap and this and it has to be shiny and all this stuff. It's like, look, just get a burr, mm -hmm. wipe it off with a strop and go to, go to work and get some projects built. Guys, thank you to Suman for being here. Head over to his channel. He's got a great channel. Subscribe, watch that video he's putting out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. If you want to support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses Stools store. We got Scary Sharp now, which is super <laughs> exciting. Uh, and as always, stay safe in the shop. And I'm never sharpening again. <laughs>